Welcome back. Uh, we still have uh, more discussions uh, right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's less than 24 hours uh, to uh, the governorship and state assembly elections in Nigeria. And voters in Lagos State will troop out, just like others around the country, to participate in the governorship and state legislative elections in what perhaps represents the toughest challenge to the reign of the ruling All Progressives Congress APC in Lagos State. The recent wave of the obedient phenomenon has thrust the Labour Party to the position of main challenger, while the hitherto main opposition party uh, in Lagos State, the People's Democratic Party, struggles to remain relevant. Now, this has not been helped by the fact that the age-long leader of the People's Democratic Party in Lagos State, Chief Olabode George, and his Eko Akete uh, leadership uh, political think tank or group um, and structure yesterday declared their support for the Labour Party and its governorship candidate. Now, meanwhile, it remains to be seen if the results of the presidential election that saw the APC lose in Lagos State will repeat itself or be repeated in the governorship poll. Um, Stephen Agiode is a legal practitioner and he's our guest this morning. Uh, on this conversation right here on The Breakfast. Stephen Aguirre, thank you very much for your time. Um, there have been projections, uh, you know, by some, you know, um, uh, statistics and intelligence organizations like SBM Intelligence, which one of the leading in the country, um, that show that we might see a different result uh, in Lagos State from what happened uh, during the presidential election, where for the first time, you know, since its formation, the APC, uh, lost a presidential poll um, in Lagos State. They're saying that the the People's Democratic, the All Progressive Congress, and the incumbent governor Saul will emerge as the governor of Lagos State, and they put some factors out there. Now, what is your analysis and your uh, uh, what your expectation as far as the, the 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 result of the Lagos State election is concerned? Well, um, if you look at uh, the result of the presidential election, um, one would see that uh, there were some factors at play, which I am not sure could have changed much. Normally in Lagos, the, there's a block ethnic vote, which has always been outside the APC. That is that of the Igbos. But something happened some time ago, the answer is crisis, which I think has had a, a profound effect on the politics of Lagos State. The youth population of Lagos State seems to have decided to adopt the stance of protest votes, and that is what I think is playing out in Lagos. Whether between last election and today something might have changed, I don't know, but it's not something I would want to wager on. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. But but let's also you know look at the fact that uh, you know prior to this time, yeah. were, if you talk about securities, a major yeah. concern, and we know how a lot of persons had anticipated that this election was not going to hold yeah. or going to have an interim government yeah. and and what yeah. have you. Yeah. Now there were some states, according to research that was also put out, that should be you know uh, given attention to these states. Yeah have high rigs of, you know, security threats. Mm -hmm. Lagos was one of them. There were about 24 of them, if I'm not mistaken. And now, uh, juxtaposing that with the security situation in the, in the 25th election, 25th of February elections, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think that we should anticipate? Do you think that the security um, personnel would do a better job? Uh, when, you, when we compare that to what had happened, we saw ballot boxes being snatched. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw people being intimidated. A lot actually happened. I mean... Uh, with all that we had, information in terms of intelligence, and the fact that it felt like the government was proactive in deploying personnel. Mm. Well, I can't speak of Lagos where I am now. What I see in Lagos is that um, the security personnel, the administrative um, mechanism of Lagos has been a little slow in reacting to what I see as threats coming from ethno-sectarian. Ethno um, you see, I mean, what we've seen now is that uh, the Labour Party candidate, uh, 
has now been associated with a particular ethnic group. Um, you see on the social media claims as if some people are taking over a state, some people are not taking over a state. You know, before this, there was a much publicized peace commission uh, in which the president was a, a part of. Things were signed. And I was saying then that things were signed, but there was no mechanism for enforcement of them. I would have thought when most of these ethnic claims and all that were coming out, I would have expected members of the Peace Committee to speak out, to say, no, this is not right. This akins back to an earlier time in our politics. We should have gone beyond this. I would have expected them to even call out names, to say, you, stop this. This is not the way to go. I think we have not seen a reaction from that peace committee. We have not seen a reaction from the, um, from the security agencies to say, the man of this campaign is dangerous. I hope between now and tomorrow we will begin to see that. People come out and say, for instance, you can't stop people from moving about. You can't stop people from voting just because they are not going to vote for you. I hope those things are going to happen between now and tomorrow. That's a big hope. It's a big hope because otherwise the situation might be unpleasant for all. I mean, because we... because you hear, I have seen I have seen some of the things going around on social media. Almost all parts of Lagos are going to be under some kind of uh, lockdown, Oru festival. What, what, what are your thoughts on that Oru festival? Because you have, you have um, yes. a, a, a sort of a, a dilemma of um, being uh, obedient to the customs and the traditions of, mm -hmm. of, of the land, you know, mm -hmm. which is uh, something that we all should respect. I mean, mm -hmm. we here in the media, we always respect that. Mm -hmm. So how, how does one maneuver, you know, that? If, 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 if care is not taken, uh, people are going to get to the to the polling stations, uh, polling centers, sorry. And there will be people there already, like we saw in the video that's mm -hmm. gone viral from mm -hmm. uh, um, MC Oloma, who is saying that uh, yeah. the APC um, uh, uh, supporters should go there on time. Mm -hmm. You know, in non indigenous and women are not allowed to step out before mm -hmm. a certain time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should they obey this? Should they say, no, I'm going to enforce my, my, my rights? You know, mm -hmm. as a part of Lagos where this was reported earlier this month, and they said they made a report to the CP. Mm. The police has, haven't said anything that I know about this so far. Okay. So we start from the fundamental... In law, we call uh, the constitution the fundamental norm, the basic norm of the country. Our constitution in section 38 allows you to have a religion, to propagate the religion in any way. Which means the people who are engaged in the watch, whatever they are doing in Oru have a legitimate right to do it. They can propagate whatever traditional belief they have. But at the same time, we have in the Constitution a provision that, one, you must not discriminate against people, which means you cannot say, for instance, because I'm a woman, I cannot move about. Two, we have basic freedom of movement, which means I can go here and go to Sokoto State at any time I want to, whether in the midnight or in the morning or wherever. I can reside there too. These are the basic, these are fundamental laws. Whatever rights you have are subsumed under that fundamental law. You cannot breach it. The fundamental rights in the Constitution are far more important than any other provisions of the Constitution, not to talk of other laws of this country. So, the rights of Oru worshippers or whatever they are is subject to the clear provisions of the Constitution. They cannot stop anybody from moving. They cannot discriminate against sections of our people. We must get that very clear. But, 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 but when, when this yes. be played on, because I, I've seen some adverts, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in um, uh, oh, well, let's see, what would the effect of this be? Because um, there's a strategy we can see from uh, 
uh, the MC Lomo camp, yeah. which is a, a big block in the APC, to mm -hmm. say, um, if you are a supporter of APC, get to the polling centre very early. Mm -hmm. And then the video, the claim is that he said, allegedly, mm -hmm. I don't speak Yoruba, I have to get translation, mm -hmm. allegedly that he's saying, when you get the early, make sure you vote very early. And then anybody that comes after you, you ask them, are you voting for APC? If not, you chase them away. These are clearly unconstitutional things. And these are things that I, I was thinking the Peace Committee and the security agencies will immediately, immediately stop in and stamp out. They are clearly unconstitutional. What, what about the security agencies? Um, I, I mean, I, we asked the question to our guests mm -hmm. on the newspaper uh, uh, analysis segment mm -hmm. that we see on the front pages of a couple of papers a uh, show of force, you know, police officers uh, and civil defense mm -hmm. in very high, with high caliber weapons. Yeah, yeah. But where are they when all of these things are happening? Uh, well, their voices should be heard. The Commissioner of Police Legal State should be able to say something about it. The Inspector General of Police should be able to say something. But more importantly, we created some political structures to deal with this, the Peace Committee. Where are they? I mean, it's not enough to tell people to come and sign uh, the papers people. that there's not going to be enforced. What's the point? When you expect people like uh, Bishop Kuka and all the, uh, uh, um, the former head of state, uh, Abdul Salam, Abdul Salam, Salam okay. all you expect them to come out and talk now. It is not, we shouldn't wait till there's a crisis. You, I expect within the next 24 hours to hear from them. Mm. This, 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 uh, the trend that is going, this uh, trend of ethnic jingoism, it takes back to the time in our past that we should have gone past. So, yeah. I mean, if you look back in our past in the early 60s, these are, these are dangerous. dangerous are, are you uh, advising voters to go out irrespective of oh, they in, they any should. traditional They country. should. The voters should go out and vote without fear. They should go out in numbers. At, at any the, time they want to? At any time they want to. They should go out in numbers and mm. vote for the candidate they want. Okay. So, but then, um, just quickly, let's, let's also look at another issue with this election. Because uh, the uh, February elections, the 25th of February election, presidential election, seem to be like uh, what would trickle down to the elections of tomorrow. Now, for instance, if we looked at some of the issues with that election, prior to the fact that INEC was boasting and bragging of having the resources and having what it takes to conduct a rerun mm. in terms of logistics. Mm. And then we also saw at the end of that election that INEC also complained that you know, they had the issue of logistics. Now, looking at that in terms of preparedness, the materials has always arrived very late. Uh, in some polling units, uh, the materials didn't arrive at the time, and we also had reports where elections were rescheduled. So again, do you think that uh, there will be an improvement of what we experience in the uh, presidential elections in terms of you know arrival of these materials? Because that's what also trickles down to the coalition center and whether or not results are also announced uh, early. Because if you don't start early, you're just going to end up late as well. You raise an important issue, but there's even a more important one that arises from all these things you have said. In the last, okay, let's start with the fact that we have 90, about 93 million registered voters in this country. Of the 93 million registered voters, 87 million, about 87 million, are said to have collected uh, their PV, PVCs. The winner in the presidential election, one with nine million votes. There's a trend in our elections that the voter turnout has been reducing. In fact, by the latest figure, we have the lowest voter turnout in Africa. By we, percentages? Yes. So if you look at it now, you will find that, I think actually then needs to ask itself, is all these things that you have highlighted. Are they the reasons why voter turnout is coming out, coming down? Is it, that, is it a question of our own performance? Is it that we don't get any to the polling booth? We, we don't get to the people? We don't have enough materials? We don't... Is it the reason? In some polling, polling yes, yes. units, if yes. you look at the result sheets on IREF portal, yes. they had more ballot papers than 
even the number of, of mm -hmm. registered voters. Mm -hmm. In some places, you see maybe uh, they have 30 registered voters, mm -hmm. and you see they took 450 ballot papers. Mm -hmm. So um, um, it can be a lack of, of ballot papers, you know, especially with the 1.7 billion dollars. Yes. yes, if you if you if, it, you, if you get to a police station at two o'clock, as I neck, as I neck. I mean, what time is really left for voting? But the, but, but the law says the law yeah, says yeah. that the last person on the on the on the queue at the time the voting is supposed to end. Oh, you, you, that allowed. is true. But if I wait for you till two, I can. I may feel you are not coming. I may lose interest in Just the go. election. Uh -huh. I may not go again. I may not come out. If I consistently go like that, I may not. There's a reason why this we are having. Decreasing voter population. And mm -hmm. INEC needs to think about it because it akins back to the legitimacy mm -hmm. of our democracy. So you have so few numbers. What could, what, what could be the possible reason? Because it's a very uh, crucial question yes. that Messi has asked. Because you have a point you've raised that over from 1999, the voters' register has been increasing. But with every increase, we There's see a, a decrease, decrease in the uh, percentage of voters uh, coming out. 24.9 people only came out out exactly, of 87.2. Yeah, exactly, yes. you know, so so what, what could the problem be? Some have said it's, we have an overbloated register that really needs to be cleaned out. Some people have died. You know, some people had, they had multiple registrations from the days of uh, Morrissey Wu and even before till now. You just had some people who just... So that the voter register is over, over blo bloated, is overstated. It's not real. Well, as for that... I would say we have not had a civil war since. So, I mean, how many people could really have died? I mean, um, statisticians will know that there's a given number of people you expect to die naturally. We have not had, uh, we had COVID, but it didn't really affect us that much. So why are the numbers so low? All these things are what a responsible uh, electoral body should sit down and investigate. If it's the voters' registrar that is overblouted, then why are you going to elections with uh, a register that is not clean? They should look at these issues after this election. But surely there's something wrong here. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong. No, no, so, so I, I, again, uh, Gino, as for tomorrow now, mm -hmm. uh, we're still looking at this, we're looking at the fact that yeah. what are we, what should we anticipate? What should people expect? Uh, yeah. Are we going to see INEC doing a better than what it did before? Mm -hmm. Are we going to have voting start for 8.30? I mean, hardly mm -hmm. have I ever seen any elections where we say we're going to have people, you know, start casting their vote by 8.30. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe this might just be different. So it's a question. And uh, what do you think? Do you think that the, the energy of the people, the people would, you know, turn out for these elections? No, I feel the people are ready. The people have shown that they are in at least in the small numbers in which they come out, if you look at them in the, in the uh, polling booth, uh, particularly in my own polling booth, what I know is people are enthusiastic. They want to come out. They want to vote if the voting uh, people are there. I, I think we will see a turnout similar to that of the last election. Uh, I think... Uh, whether INEC will be better prepared, you know, there were, there were issues with uh, um, uploading results immediately, whether they have learned their lessons, that, that remains to be seen. That remains to be seen because, you see, um, the problems with uh, voting were already evident in the Oshun state election, the one held previously. And, you know, they were already in court. And um, they didn't seem to have learned the lesson of Oshun State and all that. The elections they held with uh, the earlier off-cycle elections they had held with Vivas had thrown up Anambra, Oshun, had thrown up issues that would have warned them that the presidential elections might have some problems. And I think it was Yega Africa who, who were mentioning that uh, maybe it should have moved them to do a trial more national run mm -hmm. and all that. Well, it doesn't cut it for you to say uh, our server was uh, overwhelmed because we did not we did not foresee from off-cycle elections that uh, we will have this volume of information on our server. <laughs> so, in other words, you're mm -hmm. saying that if mm -hmm. we did not get it right with the off cycle elections yes. of... Uh, we should have learned from... Them. If we didn't learn anything, then there's no magic that can happen it's, tomorrow. The time is short. 
um, we were to hold elections last week, but we didn't hold it. You know, they spent most of that time in the election tribunal with uh, uh, the, some of the parties and all that. You know, the reason why it was postponed was uh, basically because they needed the same machines they used for the presidential needed to be cleaned up. So they've been engaged in some other activities other than preparing, other, other than correcting the, their past, you know. So I don't really see the time they have to do this. In any case, the time is two weeks. Is even but, 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 but Professor Mahmoud Yakubu had said uh, early mm. this month yes. that uh, um, uh, Nigerians should be assured that the bimodal voter accreditation system, BVAS, mm. uh, will be deployed for the elections mm. and that um, uh, the machines uh, used will, are being worked on to avoid a repeat of the glitches that occurred on February 25 in the national polls. Mm. You know, so, so this assurance by Moya could be something we can take to the bank, don't you think so? Mm. Because the main issue for the BVAS, let's just start with the BVAS, mm -hmm. was the upload of the presidential results, mm. um, uh, transfer first of all, transmission, whichever, transmission. whichever you know, you lawyers. The accreditation was okay. Yeah, but transmission of the presidential election results yeah. to the INEC system, mm -hmm. which is is in the guidelines section thirty eight subsection mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. and then you have the upload of the scanned copy of the from ECAA mm -hmm. to IRA real time, mm -hmm. which was what they assured. Mm -hmm. So. Um, based on what he said now, what that he, they are, he assured. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's assuring. He's not like, <laughs> assuring again. Or like a politician would say, he's assuring. He's assuring. You know that um, this time the Nigerians should be uh, be, sh be rest assured that they, they won't. Uh, well, they, the glitches, sure. like they call it. We have a choice, but as we have said, he has promised before. But let us take his word for it this time around. I hope for the best, but. Um, if uh, if uh, the past is a guide, you know what to think hmm. anyway. <laughs> and so you're, you're saying Lepa cannot uh, change his spots. Um, um, now, we also have issues, um, uh, I mean, with, apart from the beavers now, mm -hmm. the pose itself, mm -hmm. uh, daylight rigging. You know, uh, mm -hmm. someone took us down memory lane on social media mm -hmm. last night. I saw a clip of the Shagari time mm -hmm. with the NNPP and Co. When the, the party that lost, in that election, say, mm. you know, uh, said, hey, there was a rigging. Mm. In fact, they said fantastic rigging, mm. you know, and they went, instead of going to go to the court and all that. Mm. So history, is, it shows the history repeats itself. I know you wear that very well. Mm -hmm. um, w w do you expect that there'll be any different, you know, it's, it, any difference in this election? We saw in some states, uh, um, 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 coalition officers who are professors from our, our, our ivory towers, our tertiary institutions, went missing. With result sheets, nobody could find them, mm. and 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 appeared after three days to give results that were different mm. from what we, even now, so now we are seeing on the INEC portal. Mm. Um, so, as far as the rigging is concerned, mm. um, of, uh, you know, do you do you expect to see any different, uh, any, any any difference? Right? To solve the problem, the current problem of rigging. Um, with beavers, with, you know, we've deployed a lot of technology along with ZPAD before mm -hmm. then. Uh, I'm talking that, about rewriting uh, the Rewriting results. results and all that. I know what I'm saying is, what, what I'm saying is, we did all this to avoid uh, uh, rigging. It, uh, technology doesn't seem to have helped. I think we have a human problem which we need to solve. Uh, we cannot solve with technology, solve a human problem. What you do, you can make things faster with technology. You can't solve the human problem. We need to sit down and address the human problem that causes all these things. It's the job of INEC. Maybe bring civil society groups together in order to look at it and see how we can solve it. It's a topic we can't finish now. Definitely. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. We have to, we have to go because uh, we're out of time. But it remains to be seen if um, Lagos State will have for the first time a new party in, in charge. Uh, different from the Tinubu political dynasty, of the, there will be a continuation. Some of, you know, the, uh, given analysis that um, oh, the reason why the APC lost the presidential election in Lagos State mm -hmm. is that uh, Yoruba Christians mm -hmm. decided not to support the Muslim Muslim ticket. That they will come out and uh, probably would see a push for the APC. But uh, I don't know if that very if, briefly, please. If there's a change, if there's a change in Lagos State, it will be in keeping with what democracy is about. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. If there's no change, then it's a warning to the uh, current person, current governor, to do better. Okay. Uh -huh. right. You can see, we in the last one week or so, we've seen him move out, campaign and all that. Before this, this had not been the case. 
he, I think part of the problems he may have had in this election is that he did not, before this, itemize his own achievements so clearly so that people can see. And then in the, with the issue of his, the answers, he was not upfront. Uh, he was not um, 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 clear in his, some of his actions. I mean, you set up a, a panel and then you track the results of your own panel. Uh, who does that? Mm. All right. Uh, Stephen Aguiode, uh, legal practitioner, has been through having you on the breakfast this morning. We look forward to having you again. Um, all right. Uh, Mercy, he, he said it all that, uh, you know, the voters should feel free to to defy the gods of the land. <laughs> he didn't use those words. <laughs> he didn't use those words. Fair fairness no. to him. But basically, you came to work very this morning. I know you stay in a, in a, uh, uh, in a Ilegushi uh, kingdom. <laughs> He's so like, how, uh, how, you say, wait, are you are you, you know, at home? Wait, it feels like every excuse. other time. It feels like every <laughs> other time. Uh, you're changing the location of where I live. But <laughs> however, is, no, but, no, no, no. You, you know, but but it, I mean, it shows a good worker because you defied. No, but Kofi, if you if, if you look at it, land, I mean, let's even be very realistic. When we had the issue of COVID, as deadly as COVID was, uh, there was still exception for COVID. Still recognized essential workers, essential workers. I'm sure that the gods of the land should also factor essential workers, well, like doctors, well, like media practitioners, you, you might have the police to, and what have you. you so, have I, I mean, if you begin to have, you, you know, the, have to go for the gods, if, if you have the gods of the land not caring about, you know, this set of persons that are very important in society. Essential workers. Then, 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 then really, the you, you, you know, speak, the, the, speak English I don't know, but my point might, is might, might the, the, the gods of the land should also consider. If you well, have something as deadly as COVID well, and COVID had no restrictions. You might have to go for Consultation in Kofi, the, in we the need shrine, to go away. That's the size well, of the conversation. But we here plus Africa, we have a high regard for, you know, uh, uh, traditional institutions. We love them and we respect them. We'll take a break and when we come back, we'll discuss sports. Please stay with us.